start the meeting. Okay. Carol has been involved in a multi-sided project that promises to teach us about the governance of New Scipio at the same time as it takes us visually into the past with the preservation of photographs of former presidentes. This can lead to an expanded awareness of the importance of city governance in the lives of elements, a worthy enterprise indeed. So carry on, Errol. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much, Pam. And I really do appreciate your introductions. You put so much work and enthusiasm into it. So I'm, I'm really uh, uh, enjoy hearing them uh, each day. And uh, I see David has joined us there. Well, anyway, I'm now going to share the screen and uh, we'll see if it works. I always, always uh, hold my breath, okay. So you're all seeing the PowerPoint, right? Right. Yes. Right. Okay. That's that's what I like to hear is that uh, that you're there with me. Okay. I'm. This is not. <laughs> uh, some people in our group give scholarly presentations, and this isn't so much scholarly as just telling of a project that we're doing that a number of us are involved with including our photo committee. And on our photo committee, we have uh, Umberto Enriquez, who uh, is, takes care of things at the Hacienda for electronics. And he is uh, a photographer. And we have Stephanie Meyer. And Stephanie has been involved in all things photography since I've been a part of the History Association. And, and of course me. So. Um, We've had several meetings over the president days, and uh, we're all working to bring this, uh, bring this forward. Uh, the one thing that I, I wanted <clears throat> to say is kind of that this is a project that's in steps. And uh, the first step was in recopying the historic photographs of the previous president days of Alamos. Now, a couple things I want to say. Um, this really wasn't my idea. I had a meeting in January of 2020 with Juan Carlos Olguin Balderrama. We all know him, our cronista for Alamos and our historian. And I had a meeting with him uh, in January, and I had hoped that Juan Casanova could join us. Now, Juan Casanova has presented twice for us uh, over the years. And he is a, an employee of the Cultural Institute of Sonora, Sonora and a great photographer. And he has talked about his project to preserve the uh, and to archive old photographs uh, of Sonora. And he has been able to get a room at the Cultural Institute in Hermosillo, which is temperature controlled so that old images that he can get uh, will be preserved. Uh, humidity is, uh, is uh, you know, monitored and that way they won't deteriorate anymore. Well, so I brought Juan Carlos and was hoping Juan could join us, but Juan couldn't, it was the festival and he had another obligation. So Juan Carlos and I talked and I asked Juan what pictures he had that he might be able to share with us for our digital library. And he mentioned the Presidentes uh, in City Hall. And he said, we have those pictures outside of the mayor's office and uh, they're deteriorating and the frames are broken. And what can we do uh, to, to help preserve those pictures? Well, we went over to City Hall and we looked at them uh, some of you, I'm sure, have seen them. Maybe all of you have seen them up there. They're up on the second floor right next to the mayor's office. And <clears throat> they're not there now, but they had all the pictures going back to 1857 of the, the mayors, the Presidentes of Alamos. 
just in case anyone doesn't know, uh, Presidente is in charge of the municipio. And that's what Victor is. He's in charge not only of Alamo City, but the municipio. And an alcalde is a mayor that's just in charge of the city. So we always make that distinction. And I can remember Leila correcting everybody when they would call a particular person a mayor. No, they're a presidente because the mayor is, is smaller in statue. Well, we looked at the pictures and uh, we started at that point deciding what we could do. And <clears throat> In March of 2020, uh, when Carol and I came back to Alamos, we then uh, unframed all of the pictures. Uh, Juan Carlos had gotten permission from the city hall. Of course, he's a Balderrama. Victor is a Balderrama. I thought, man, this is a slam dunk. Boy, we're going to get all this great cooperation. But he got uh, permission from city hall. Uh, we unframed. 60 some pictures. I'm going to say 66, but I might be off one or two. But we unframed the pictures. And then the process was in recopying them. Now, what I did, I set up my lights, I brought a copy stand, and I put the picture, uh, we, we held it flat with uh, metal uh, magnetic strips. And I then went through the, the process of re-photographing every picture. Now, for those of you that, that know, if you, uh, it's rare to find a scanner as large as these pictures, and it's much easier to re-photograph them than to try to find a scanner to make a scan copy. And of course, when you re-photograph it, you've got a very high resolution image that you can blow up even larger than what the original was without losing any quality. Uh, so I went through the pictures. Uh, it, it didn't take me too long uh, to do this process. I think a couple of days, I left the equipment all set up there and the room at that time was vacant. So I had plenty of space to work with. I also did a few other pictures that I had available uh, Stephanie brought me in a couple of pictures that she had access to, and we uh, re-photographed them. So that was step one. Now, the rest of step one took much more time because after they were recopied, I took three images of each, each Presidente, uh, underexposed, correct exposed, overexposed. You know. I then picked out the favorite. And in Photoshop, I did the best I could to make it look like it was originally. Uh, these pictures were in bad shape and they had splotches over the faces and whatever. So I did my best uh, to bring the, the original quality back. So for each picture, we're looking at 30 to 45 minutes uh, per picture, but... Wow. Uh, I thought, boy, this is, we're going to have this thing done in a couple of months. And so I, you know, I spent a lot of time the month after we came back from Phoenix in April of 2020. Of course, it was pandemic. So, so a lot of the things that we all did during the pandemic, we weren't doing. So during that time, I, when I came back to Alamos in July of 2020, I had copies, TIFF files of all of these pictures. And then it was, we, we needed to see, well, okay, uh, what are we gonna do? How can we get them printed up? When we met with Juan Carlos in our meeting of April of 2020, we had an agreement or he said, the city had agreed, this was all through him, to reframe and hang the pictures. And I said, uh, we would pay for copying, you know, uh, making new prints of each of the pictures. And also we would make a, a book of eight and a, eight and a half by 11 prints uh, for their reference for our library with the History Association for them. So I said, we'd cover the cost of the pictures if, uh, if and hopefully you can cover the cost of the framing and the mats and the glass now, in many cases, we had glass mats backing, but in some cases not. 
So we thought we had the agreement and I thought, man, I'm gonna print these pictures up in July and it's all gonna be done. Well, many of you have had experience working with City Hall and you know that things don't go quite as you plan. What we ended up doing, um, by the way, with the book, uh, this is my contact with City Hall, uh, who's in the center is Jose Armando Rojas. And <clears throat> to his, his right is Javier and to his left is uh, Cloritza. And they work in the office, uh, the archive office there at uh, Alamos City Hall. And uh, they're holding uh, the book that we have created so far. Um, and what it is, I made eight and a half by 11 prints of each Presidente. And they're into a, a folder, uh, a 48 page uh, folder. And so you just drop the print in, you can put front and back, and that way you can have 98 uh, uh, images within that folder. Now, the good thing about a folder is uh, it's easy to take care of. If you've got a mistake, all you've got to do is worry about one picture. Once you go into a hardbound book, uh, even a softbound book, uh, making changes and improvements and additions are very troublesome. But in a book like this, uh, it's quite simple. But anyway, we started with this. Once this project is done, we may want to make a hardbound copy. Uh, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But anyway, I have been working with Jose Armando uh, in City Hall since uh, for the past two years, uh, anyway, on the project. Well, we'll go back. Uh, that was step one is uh, working on all that. Step two is preserving the historic photocopies that were there. These pictures right now are just stacked on top of each other um, without any means of protecting them from weather, humidity, uh, et cetera. They're in City Hall uh, deteriorating more. Um, I have tried as, as hard as possible to get the Cultural Institute to work with the city and you get into turf things. Uh, these are our pictures. We don't want them in Hermosillo, you know, that kind of a thing. Uh, Hermosillo has a lot of very important records for Alamos. And I know Juan Carlos uh, said that on many things I've talked to him about, Juan Carlos Olgi, uh, he says, well, that's in Hermosillo, that's not in City Hall. Well, the people in Alamos kind of want to keep what they have. so. There's an issue of that, and I'm not sure of the other issues because this is something I can't control. I hope that these pictures are turned over to the Cultural Institute and are preserved. Now, some of them aren't that old. Uh, of course, it, it goes to the recent mayors, but some of the pictures uh, you know, have got to be 100 years old. And when you get into a 100-year-old 100 100 image, um, you know, it has, it is deteriorating rapidly. So that's step two. Step two is ongoing. Um, I'll get more serious about step two uh, when we get through step three. So now step three is placing a display of my re-photographed images uh, into uh, uh, Alamos City Hall. Now, <coughs> I mentioned that in our meeting in April of 2020, uh, all of us in the committee thought we had a done deal. And uh, since that time, uh, Jose Armando definitely wants to get those pictures up, but he doesn't control the budget. And uh, I've talked to a number of people that are closer to the budget, but I don't really have a yes or no whether or not uh, the city, as much as they want as Jose Armando and others want it, I really don't know if it is enough of a priority for the city to, to actually do that. What we need to have is, uh, first of all, the room has to be prepared. There's holes in the wall, cracks in the wall. So the room has to be prepared, which means painted. So that is the labor. Uh, they might get the labor through the city, but you know, paint is kind of expensive. So that's number one. Number two, 
we have uh, our intern that's working on this project, Danielle, has told me that there are 30 to 40 good frames, which means we'll need uh, uh, 20 to 30 more right now. And those will have to be, uh, whether they're made by someone here in Alamos or we buy them, um, there's, a, there's a money cost to that. Plus, uh, each frame has glass and each frame has, uh, each image has mats. The mats are more expensive than I had hoped. Uh, there is a, um, in Gallery, Espana, and Navajoa could do all of this. Um, you know, if I had the money in hand, uh, they could have, uh, have everything ready within uh, a week or 10 days. But of course, we don't have the money in hand yet, and things are slow. The festival uh, last, I'm so happy we had FAUT, but that held things up again because Jose Armando was not available during the first part of FAUT when I was trying to meet with him and with Danielle. And then during the second part of FAUT, as many of you know, I tested positive for COVID. So that stopped a second meeting that we had planned. But anyway, step three is ongoing. And every time I go to Alamos, I'm waiting for a breakthrough and I, I hope it will come. Step four is uh, something that we are working on and uh, this doesn't really involve uh, City Hall. This is just us and our volunteers. Step four is researching the historical information for a book. Now, I don't mean a bestseller for the New York Times uh, book list or something. I mean a book for our research library and for City Hall, which has important information about the Presidentes of Alamos. And that book will have basic information on the Presidente. Um, and all of these Presidentes uh, so far have had connect, well, I think so far have had deep roots within the city and their families, et cetera. So we will have that information. Uh, we will have information on the events occurring in Alamos uh, during their time of service. And uh, we all know in recent memory, uh, the various presidentes, uh, I always remember, uh, I remember uh, Ruth, uh, Ruth uh, um, oh, I can't think of Acuna. it. Okay, I remember her for the arch. The arch came about during her term and uh, that arch coming into the city. Uh, during Joaquin's turn, Navarro's turn, uh, we had the stair steps going up to the Mirador with that. Well, anyway, uh, we want those kinds of things mentioned that occurred in Alamos, but we also want information about Sonora and Mexico briefly, brief information uh, during the time that they serve. This way it will be truly a, a historic document. And um, now what we have in mind will be, whoops, one more, uh, will be a book and it will be similar to this. This is of course not final, uh, <clears throat> but this was our first mayor that we have photographed, Bartolome y Almada in Salido. He was a very important person. Uh, and I, uh, what I did, I put in Spanish, uh, which of course, uh, before the book, we would have a professional translator, but I put in the first paragraph is some biographical information about him. Uh, of course, he died in 1872 at the age of 54, born in 1817. And much of his time in Alamos, he was the deputy in Mexico City to Congress. And of course, we all know that Bartolome, um, I'll have it a little later, he was the one who um, built the first structure at Las Delicias. And that was uh, Almada mm. property then outside of, uh, of the, the town itself. Well, anyway, this is what it will look like. Left side, a picture of the Presidente, right side information about themselves, what happened in Alamos and what happened in Mexico. Doesn't that look beautiful? I can't wait till it gets done. So anyway, that is something uh, that we can work on now uh, because that's a matter of getting the information and preparing it 
It's it, uh, once it's prepared, if we at first we'll put it into folders, which uh, we can change. And if we do want to uh, make it hardbound, of course, then we'll have to get funding to pay for that. Now, um, anyway, okay. Oh, this is our intern, uh, uh, Danielle. We selected interns, I think in November, and we have two interns uh, and Barbara, uh, she's not with us today, I don't think, but hopefully. Yes, she is. Yes, Barbara, good, I couldn't see you. <clears throat> Barbara is responsible for the interns and one intern, Daniela, they both named Danielle and Daniela. So uh, Daniela is working uh, with Linda and others uh, on the cemetery. And Danielle is working with Jose Armando and City Hall on project on, on issues related to this project. One thing he's doing is checking out uh, the spellings, the dates. Uh, you might think everything is official and the official lists in City Hall are exact, you know, no problems there. And we found out that's not true. Also, as careful as I was to type the names of the Presidentes and get all the accents in, there are mistakes. Even after the, the uh, prints uh, were made, uh, you know, there's a mistake in the name and they'll either have, well, they'll probably have to be reprinted. Uh, but we'll wait for that. Uh, at least we now have a reference and Danielle is checking to make sure as, as is Jose Armando uh, that the dates match up. Another interesting thing, well, I'll go through it when we go. I, I found some interesting things on the official list as compared to uh, the pictures uh, that were there uh, in City Hall. I hope I can stop that from uh, ringing here should have silenced the, silenced the phone before we started that. Okay, that's anyway, uh, Danielle, I'm gonna uh, uh, go on further. Um, our first mayor that we have, and you might say, why did this all start in 1857? We all know that Alamos uh, was a city going back, uh, you know, to the 17th century to 1683 or whatever date in there that we want to call. Uh, why don't we have pictures or uh, paintings, et cetera, of earlier people? Well, we, we don't have pictures because photography didn't come to Sonora until about 1860. So uh, this picture could have been from uh, Bartolome's second term. It could have been in between terms as mayor, uh, but uh, it most certainly was not taken in 1857 because we had no uh, cameras or photo studios or anything in Sonora at that time. Juan Carlos gave us a wonderful presentation two or three years ago on the history of photography within Sonora. And uh, the first, uh, of course, studio was there in Guaymas. And we know that photography uh, wasn't really invented until 1837 when uh, Niepce Pe I think if I'm pronouncing it right, I was going to write it out and look at it, but he gave a presentation for uh, the Academy of Sciences in Paris uh, with the French with a system to where an image could be fixed uh, and become permanent. And so that was 1837. In 1839, Louis Daguerre then uh, came up with another process where he put the image on a copper plate with silver crystals, uh, with mercury vapors, the image was locked in. It was very fragile, so it was put under glass. This became a, da a daguerreotype, uh, which was popular between 1840 and 1860. Now, by the time photographers came to Sonora, they were taking pictures on glass, uh, uh, images on uh, uh, you know uh, light-sensitive silver uh, crystals onto a glass negative. And that's what uh, these pictures were then made, prints made from those kinds of negatives. I'd love to, if we could ever come up with those negatives, how wonderful that would be, um, I, I doubt. And that's, that would be step five uh, from this procedure. 
I want to talk a little bit about that first mayor, and this is in the English, and it has, uh, you know, his about his parents and family, and uh, you know, his father was twenty nine. Let's see, I, I, I need to. Well, anyway, it, you can read it easier than I can. I've got pictures over part of it. But uh, anyway, he, uh, he got married in April of 1838. They had at least four sons and five daughters that he died in, in 1872. And of course, we know that during his time in office, Mexico was in a state of turmoil. And during the 1860s, that's when uh, the imperial uh, dynasty was started with Maximilian and ended and of course, Juarez and uh, the struggle uh, of the people of Mexico, there was great suffering. And here in Alamos, the city suffered so much. And, um, you know, and that was the first time. Of course, Alamos has suffered many times since then. But I have in the last paragraph, it was Bartolome Almada who built Las Galicias on his uh, family estate outside of uh, Alamos. Uh, construction began in 1856, but the work was suspended because he was in Mexico City until approximately 1859 when uh, the uh, first pavilion was completed and the first well was dug. I think there are three wells on the property. Originally, I don't know how many uh, hectares it was originally, but it was something like 270 acres uh, in there. Now, um, the pavilion and the orchard, and this acreage was in, was uh, a fruit orchard, and that was all destroyed in 1866. And um, there are a number of things. Our third mayor um, was, was uh, uh, you know, involved, especially uh, who was Chato, Almada's brother, uh, was killed in 1866. Uh, during the the uh, the battles. Well, anyway, I'm now going to go through the mayors. I thought about what I would do is have information on each mayor uh, as we went through it, and you know, blah blah blah. Well, of course, you know the what you originally planned to do doesn't always work out. Uh, it will take a lot of work to find information. Bartolome was fairly easy but the other mayors are much more difficult. Uh, the second mayor was 1858 to 1859, uh, Antonio B. Uh, Almada, uh, Benigno, Benigno, yeah. And uh, so far, there's not much information on him. Now I put a missing, we have no pictures for the mayors of the 1860s. Uh, nothing for Mateo Ortiz. Oh, another thing to remember, the mayor's offices have constantly changes their terms. The first uh, presidentes were for one year terms. And uh, it wasn't until, you know, the, uh, uh, the 19th century that we, uh, or later in the 19th century that we went up to two years. And of course the standard three year term I think came in, in the 1930s or 40s. We'll see it as we go through this. But Mateo Ortiz, Vicente Ortiz, um, you know, Ignacio Palomares, we have no pictures of these, uh, of these. I don't know if we even have Carlos Gaxiola. I didn't put missing by, oh no, I did. He, he's missing as well. Well, these, this is the official city list. Uh, now, our, we had the first mayor, there is Antonio B. Almada, and uh, he was mayor from 1858 to 59. But then the uh, underneath the picture that was hanging in City Hall, we had a copper uh, caption, which said he was also mayor 1870, 1871. Well, that's the same time that Bartolome was mayor. So we have to clarify many issues uh, before we published a uh, historical, you know, really guide and reference, we will, we've got to be correct and make sure that these things uh, all match up. Our third mayor, uh, Antonio Almada, was 
1959. And I do have some information on him, but uh, he was a cousin, uh, you know, one of the Almada family, but he was a cousin to Bartolome. And he fought with the Imperial forces as did Chato Almada. And of course, Chato is very famous. And um, I know that we <clears throat> have information on him and probably Pam, <laughs> excuse me, Pam next week. When she talks about the Almadas, may have some good information on Chato. But anyway, uh, Antonio was killed, um, you know, there in 1866 when he was mistaken for uh, his brother Chato and he was uh, um, killed there in Alamos uh, by the Republican army uh, led by uh, uh, Martinez, anyway, with the Republican army. Chato was later captured and was also executed there in Alamos. Sometimes it's, it's hard when we look at this little tranquil village today to remember there is great suffering that has occurred over the years uh, in this, this little Pueblo. Well, this, uh, we need, of course, need much more information on Antonio Anselmo Almada. And there are many Antonio Almadas, that's the other thing. And so we've got to double check and make sure this is the correct Antonio Almada before uh, we get into publishing a text. When I say publishing, I don't mean publishing like our guidebook, which we're selling, et cetera. I mean, just for historical reference, having uh, something as a research guide, both for City Hall and for us, and uh, for other uh, historical organizations that may want it. If you look at the 1860s and 1870s, uh, you see there are a number of missing pictures. What do we do with those? Well, eventually uh, we are going to work with the families involved to see if we can get a picture, any picture, and that we can then scan that picture and have it hanging in City Hall. But you can see there are already eight or so missing pictures. And uh, so we have our work cut out. Now, the Almada family, of course, Almadas are still here, but the family has many branches. All of these families have branches. Whether we're going to be able to find a picture is anyone's guess. Juan Carlos has worked with me. He's got some, he sent me some low res. Uh, low resolution files, which I found I can blow up and it looks pretty decent uh, when I made 12 by 16 images. I don't know if I mentioned this, but we do have now 12 by 16 images of all of the, the mayors that were on City Hall, ready to be framed. And those images are in uh, with uh, Jose Antonio and uh, we'll be getting them framed when when we have an opportunity. Please everyone silence. If you're not silenced, please silence as we go through here. Well, turn it off the TV. Yeah. Um, please, please silence. Okay. Uh, our third picture that we have is uh, Carino Corbala. And the Corbala family appears in several of these. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I don't have an, uh, some of them I have a typo. I didn't put the accent where it belongs. If you look at him, he was mayor for half a century. Uh, each term was, was one year, but look at that, 71, 72, et cetera, et cetera. The good thing is that one picture takes care of a lot of years. Uh, that's the good thing about it. Uh, but uh, we'll have to get a lot of information uh, when we come to the book and we try to cover all of those years, that'll be a, another obstacle that uh, we'll, we'll face. Uh, the next group, we have only two mi um, missing. From this group, uh, we have a much more co uh, complete collection of pictures. Francisco Salido, I love that image. That's a low res file. And of course it's kind of blurry, but what a great picture, a great portrait and uh, 1875, 1876. And of course, the Salidos and the Alamadas 
uh, are both very important families. And uh, I'm sure that we can get information on this. Tranquilino Otero Garcia Reynos, uh, 81 to 82, 1902 to 1903. Uh, and we have, of course, that means information on both uh, the terms that we have in office. Pedro S. Salazar, and uh, that, this picture was extremely difficult to pull out, but I think it's, uh, I hope it's a very good likeness of him. Uh, I love these mustaches. I wish I could grow a, a good mustache like, like they had then. Uh, that's one thing that I, I really like. Okay, our next group of mayors, 1891 to 1899, and uh, we start with uh, Ignacio Almada, and uh, then we go to uh, Angel Almada. And we have a few Almadas in between as well as uh, Carino Corbela. Uh, Ignacio Almada y Alvarado. Had, there are a lot of interesting things happened during his term. And I know Jose um, Juan Carlos has written a number of things on his website of events that happened in which uh, Ignacio was mayor. And of course, with all those years, there were a lot of important events, especially prior to the revolution. I mean, you look at the dates, uh, a lot of things, especially from 1900 to 1910, uh, Ramon Corral was, uh, during much of that time, was the vice president of Mexico. And Ramon Corral uh, brought many things, uh, including our slaughterhouse uh, to Alamos that time. There, uh, a lot of uh, important things happen and Alamos became, uh, because the vice president of Mexico was from Alamos, we got a lot of benefits during that time. Uh, so there'll be a lot the, there. the gentleman before, sorry for interrupting, he looks like he's one-eyed. He's either blind or he has a, I don't know if they did this eye prosthetics. Ignacio Alra, Alvar, you, this guy? Yes. Uh, we do have one blind president. I don't think it was him. You've got to realize, <clears throat> that's Catherine, right, talking. Yeah. You've got to realize that when we copy these, and I try to bring out their eyes in some cases, it's difficult to do. So he might have been, but that's something we'll research out. Okay. Uh, to find out that about him. Angel Almada, Almada um, we have from 88, 89, et cetera, et cetera. Alfredo J. Almada, you notice the Almada name uh, appears, and he was in the early 1900s were uh, his dates as a Presidente. And now we're back to Ignacio once again. Uh, this is from 1899 to uh, 1912, uh, uh, and the pictures don't completely match up. Oh, I also threw in 1911 to 1920. Now, if you look, you'll see that we have a lot of mayors during that time. It's not only the one year revolution, but in sometimes uh, Alfredo Almada, Antonio Golcalea, I don't have his picture at all, he's missing. Uh, the same dates, they were mayor. Uh, sometimes they resigned, it was revolution time. Uh, there were a lot of, uh, a lot of things uh, that were happening. Okay, this is an interesting case here. Herman Blay Seldner. Uh, many of you probably know something about him because it was his house that uh, our museum uh, was located. That was a store uh, that he ran, which sold mining materials. And uh, that store was uh, donated, I guess, by the family. Anyway, I think it was donated. And Tony will, is the expert on this uh, when the museum was made. And uh, this, the, the store was abandoned from something like 1915 until about 1983. Um, it, it was just left just as it was. Don't you wish you had a camera in 1983 to go into that and take pictures? I know dust and all the things, something that had set for 70 years uh, untouched. Now, here's the other interesting thing about Herman. We have no record in the official records that he was ever the Presidente of Alamos. However, his picture was on the wall. So uh, I copied the picture on the wall 
but this is something and it had the date in the caption underneath uh, 1911. Uh, if this is true, it's not in the official archives from the city, uh, but that's another thing we'll have to investigate. Uh, I love that portrait. That another, was another one sent to me by Juan Carlos. This is not the official portrait that was in City Hall, but this is much a much better image of Herman Bly if, uh, if we can use it. Joaquim uh, Urea, isn't that a great portrait with the cane? Ah, I just love these portraits. And <clears throat> most are head and shoulder shots, but we have a few like that. And look at this. I, I think he must be, a, a, you know, a, an art, archbishop reading from the Bible, but of course I have no idea what he's reading. But uh, uh, Barso Sabal, uh, Adrian Marcor, 1911. We had so many mayors in 1910, 1911, Alfredo Cano, 1911. Uh, and, it's, and that should have the accent of Romulo Solido, I'm sure, and it doesn't, so that will have to be corrected. And that was uh, 1911 and then two different terms. Uh, Miguel S. Urea, another Urea family member. I love the colors then and uh, that they had. There was something so dignified. You know, pictures, information is important, but uh, pictures have their own history. That you look at, you look at that face, you look at that, the dress of that time, and it gives you a real insight into what life was like. And for those of us that take pictures, and I'm sure that needs an accent over the row, uh, the RO, and we'll we'll get that taken care of. Uh, Romulo, our Felix Flores, 1912. Uh, Ramon Lopez Acuna, 13 and 14. <laughs> Look at that tie. I love that tie, that bow tie there, white on white. Nah, fantastic. Um, Carlos Salazar. Now, if any of you have information about these mares as we go through the pictures, uh, speak up. And, uh, and we'll get you. Uh, I do have information on Enrique M. Rochin. Um, <clears throat> Rochin, he was the 1916, um, 1917, but a colleague of mine in Phoenix that I taught with, uh, Rosa Rochin, uh, at one time years and years before I even knew anything about Alamos, uh, I asked her, I said, well, where's your family from? She said, well, it's from Sonora. It's from a little town in Mexico. It's called Alamos. Well, this was part of that family. And uh, I sent her that when I redid the pictures, I sent it to her and she was thrilled because she of course had never seen the picture and didn't even know that a member of her family had been mayor. What a shot. Uh, what is he holding, a sword? I don't know. Uh, Modesto J. Lozano. And look at that mustache there. I mean, he looks Chinese. Uh, he was the mayor. Uh, in 1917, and then several different terms, up to 1931, uh, Rudecino Valenzuela Mendivil. And we have several Mendivils over the years. Jose Tarado Salido, 1919, 1920. And, um, and we have him, of course, he's mentioned up here, we have a lot of missing uh, pictures. Thank, we know that the Palomares family is still around uh, for pictures there. Uh, the Salazar family, of course, Salido family is. I'm hoping that we can pick up these pictures. And that's part one thing that I'm working on <coughs> with uh, Jose Armando. Uh, yeah. I don't know if he, it's not a priority. He has many other things he's doing. I don't think this is really gonna take off to get any of these old pictures until we as the History Association say, okay, we're marching to City Hall, we're gonna contact the families and we're gonna get it done. Just as we do with interviews and everything else, we're gonna look for pictures and hopefully we'll be able to find them. Uh, <clears throat> Alfonso Lara, what a, a picture, what a face. Um, I don't know. I. It, it's kind of scary there, but uh, 1922, and then again in 1932, 36, 37. 
Leopoldo A. Acosta. This is of the Acosta family right here. And um, Antonio, it's uh, Antonio <laughs> Acosta's great uncle or, or, or great, well, great, I don't know. That's why I wanted Lorna here because she knows where all the Acosta is found. What a great picture. I just, I fall in love with some of these images. Of course, I've spent time uh, uh, trying to make them look as, as well as, as I can. Uh, Francisco Lerma Salido uh, was mayor in 25, 26. And then uh, Rafael Corbela Castillo, 20, also 25. See, these things, did one resign? We have to resolve all of these issues. Eduardo G. Rosas, 26, 27. Uh, Armin Daris in 27, 28. Uh, nice shot of him. Elias Miranda Acosta, another Acosta, 1928. Uh, and then uh, Corbela should have the accent Acuna, 29, 35, 36. Uh, Urea Pereira, 1931 to 33. Uh, you know, dark glasses. Why in the world would someone have an official portrait and wear dark glasses? Who was a photographer that allowed that to happen? I mean, he should, maybe he was blind. He could have been. He could have been. Uh, that's about the only explanation. Okay. Uh, Armin Dades again, 1933 to 1935. This picture was extremely difficult uh, to, uh, to work with. And there were so many different flaws. But we got that. Okay, now 1935 up to 1952, uh, our mayor's Alberto Ramos. Great shot. We'll have to get information. Carlos Garcia, we need an accent on the eye. Uh, Oscar Rosas Palamante, uh, uh, Jose Maria Palomares. He had to have been blind in, you know, of course, the one eye. Uh, Juan de Dios Urea Para. 43 to 46. Now, if you notice, uh, the, uh, uh, the, third, the three year terms began in 1943. And that's when, and from this point, things are pretty, uh, everything matches up with city hall records and pictures from 1943 on. Marcelina Valenzuela, 46 to 49. Uh, Martins, uh, you know, Salido Rodriguez, 49 to 52. And uh, this is our list anyway, from 52 to 94. Uh, Raimundo Robles and uh, Jose uh, Robles uh, does, uh, kind of takes care of our house when we're not there. He is so proud of the fact that the Robles family was mayor. And Raimundo Robles was important too because the leather industry at one time, his company had 100 employees here in Alamos uh, in the leather industry. Uh, they were getting uh, the, the cow hides from the slaughterhouse, had a tanning operation, they made shoes, they sold shoes in a four state area. And by the time that Raimundo died, and I think he lived up into the 90s, uh, the 1990s, um, of course, the the whole business had, you know, had was no longer really there. Uh, Maximiliano Coviera Tondo, fifty five to fifty eight. Uh, Laurel Franco Franco, oh, okay, sixty one to sixty four. That means we're missing, of course, one in between. Uh, Diodoro Valenzuela Pina, sixty four to sixty seven. Uh, you know, uh, Valdemaro Corral Alvarez. Now, those of you know the, the corrals, this is, uh, we have three corral mares and David Corral was the last one, 2000 to 2003. So uh, David's, now that's where I need, I need uh, someone that knows more than I, I haven't researched it out. Valdemaro Corral, uh, we have two Baldomeros. This is the first one, and I'm not sure if they're father, grandfather to David or in the family tree. But anyway, he's the first Baldomero Corral, uh, Alvarez, 1967 to 70, uh, Reyes, 70 to 73, 
Uh, this was a skinny tie era, by the way. Uh, then we have uh, Jose Reyes Amarillo, 73 to 76. Uh, love that portrait. And um, uh, Hilo Vega, 76 to 79. Now we're getting into the recent times. Uh, need a period after uh, prof the PROF period should be. Uh, the uh, Dario Valenzuela, uh, their house, the family house is across the street from our house there in La Capilla. And uh, his daughter and uh, his two of his daughters live there and his wife is still living. She's quite, quite old. And uh, they were, uh, I had um, Esperanza from across the street over and I'm getting information from her and I didn't have it done for this presentation. Umberto Rene, Franco Terran, great image, great image there. And uh, this one came in late. Uh, it wasn't there hanging on City Hall, but this is an image uh, that will be hanging there. Manuel Luis Arzaga, 85 to 91. Uh, Enrique Ibarra, uh, I don't remember, yes. 88 to 91. This is Araceli, who has been the vice principal of Kobach. This is her father. Okay, thank you. That's what I was hoping. Chime in uh, when you've got information on people. And there should be, as we come into the modern day here, uh, there should be. Here is our next Baldomero Corral Valenzuela, uh, 91 to 94, Dr. Uh, uh, Corral. And then, okay, now we're into the home group uh, for mayors. Uh, Presidentes. Um, by the way, when I was showing these pictures to Jose that, that works for us, he had special comments about which mayors were the biggest thieves uh, in Alamos. And I, I don't know which or which. I didn't mark that down for the records. But he said one guy, he had to have, to have his clothes redone to make bigger pockets uh, for all the money that he took. But anyway, this, these are jokes about Alamos and, uh, you know, about politicians and corruption. And unfortunately, sometimes they're not jokes. Uh, now we've got Umberto Arana Murillo, 97 to 2000. Uh, and then uh, Mendeville again. Oh, and I have no idea why I have that mark over Jesus. It shouldn't be there. Uh, you know, that would, no, anyway. Uh, I'm sure that, it, I'm sure it's the regular Jose Jesus. 2000 to 2003, uh, David Corral. That picture was not hanging on the wall. Uh, we hmm. got that from the Corral family later. And uh, all of these recent pictures. Now, the other thing that I did to them I made them all duotone. Uh, some were color, starting with uh, Ruth Acuna, they had color pictures. I made everything as a duotone for, uh, to give the image anyway of the past. And of course they don't all match up exactly with the tones, uh, but this was one, David Krause, 2003 to 2006. Gloria. This was the first color image uh, that we had and 2006 to 2009, and she was the first mayor. Carol and I bought a house in 2006, and I remember she was out in La Capilla holding some kind of event, and uh, you know we got to meet her at, at that time. And then Dr. Navarro from 2009 to 2012, I have a picture of his dog in uh, our living room there in Alamos. Great image. Uh, don't have that picture for the presentation, but um, I had two photographers from our organization through each other's eyes. We were all walking through Alamos and Joaquin was outside his house. He invited us to come in uh, to photograph the patio, whatever. And uh, Dennis Scully, who's part of our group, took a picture of his dog out on the patio in a sofa. It is such an amazing picture. And Joaquin has seen it in our house. And of course he's begged me to give it to him. And I will someday give him that image. It's huge. Uh, we got a print yeah. like 36 by 48, not, not that picture of him, but the picture of the dog. 
Ben Hamin, Ben Yanaya, uh, Rosas 212 to 215. Anayas are all over. Many of us are involved with the, the uh, Anaya family and in some way we have friends, etc. cetera. And uh, Axel Omar Salas Hernandez. Now, Benny or, or my, uh, Anaya was the last picture that was on the wall. And so uh, Axel and also Victor, uh, those pictures uh, were taken later. And uh, these were, uh, of course, color. In fact, the last two images, uh, I wish, um, you know, I, I kind of like the, the background there where, to where it's, it's a real portrait. Sometimes I know the background can give us a lot of information like in this one of Victor. The good thing is that Victor's good till 2024 and hopefully we'll have the project done by 2024. And, and so he will still be the mayor uh, when this project uh, comes to uh, fruition. Mayor Nolan. Yeah. Okay, I'm, I'm kind of ending. We'll have a um, discussion here in a minute. I'll come out of the uh, stop the screen share. Uh, <clears throat> there are some costs with this. We have no idea at this point what the city will pay and everything. But just to let you know, um, there we think uh, the preparation, et cetera, or just a rough figure, that's going to be $300. Hopefully the city will do that. Frames, mats, glass, labor, uh, you know, roughly a thousand dollars to get these images framed. And we hope the city, you know, the city has said they will, we hope they will. Um, you know, if, if time goes by and we have negotiations, uh, you know, <laughs> we may find that they, they can't pay for the, uh, all of these things. Uh, the book costs, that's just uh, the book cost of, because uh, we have four copies of every book. We'll have English, Spanish, two copies for our library, two copies for City Hall. I just threw a figure out there somewhere between two and 400. And uh, just to give you some idea of uh, what this project is. Oh, now I see more of you. I didn't see, uh, welcome. I had the, uh, uh, the, uh, the PowerPoint on, so I couldn't see all of you that are here. Well, anyway, I'll take any questions you have on this project. And uh, I appreciate all the comments that uh, many of you have given so far. Any questions? I have a comment. A comment. <laughs> I have at least nope. one comment for right now. Nope. <laughs> I suggest that you, when you put the book together, that you not talk about what was going on in Mexico at the time. Uh -huh. That would be such a big project to undertake and try to decide what was important and, and, and keeping it in contact with all the other presidentes. I think just focusing on Alamos and a little bit about Sonora would be adequate. That's probably a very, very good idea. Uh, the, the suggestion of all of Mexico came from Tony Estrada. Uh, Tony and Juan Carlos and I uh, talked about, you know, in over the years on this project. And it was Tony's idea we do Mexico. Well, it would be paid, like you said, you'd have to decide what was important that happened in Mexico during that time that should be included. Okay. And so Alamos and Sonora. And we're not to that point, and, but I think that's a very good uh, suggestion to go by. And I see Barbara's there. I didn't see you uh, when I had the PowerPoint on. And Barbara is, uh, this is a, a project for our interns uh, that we hope to work on um, because that's something that college students or interns can be so valuable for us to get information working directly uh, with the families. Uh, to come up with the, the background. And you know, Errol, when um, Danielle spoke with us, he said when he talked to City Hall, it was just amazing that even the basic biographical information about birth and death and where they lived and where they died was not there. Yeah. And all of us kind of have this assumption that that basic biography is in place and certainly in the place where someone was going to be the, pre the uh, Presidente. 
So he has been given a list by the people there of the people that are, because we started to make this a kind of doable project for him, yeah. 10 presidents at a time, starting at the current time, rather than having him have to go back to 1857 and research that. <laughs> but in doing so, he was given the names of all the families that are available and given a letter of introduction. I mean, this is the kind of thing that an intern is an amazing opportunity. And so he has personally contacted them. Many of them have been too um, busy to respond, but some of them have, and they have responded with great courtesy and great generosity. And I just think, I just feel so good that our intern is having that opportunity. And he said, basically, he had no knowledge of all of this stuff whether it existed or didn't exist or never even thought of it. And our other intern, which we'll talk about later sometime, has yeah. the same experience. This is, this? this is new to them. This is new to the people in Alamos. And here we are bringing it forward. So uh, Errol, I just really enjoyed your presentation. Um, I really enjoyed looking at those pictures up close, 18 inches away and <laughs> studying their ties and their glasses <laughs> and their mustaches and for goodness oh, sakes, their hair. So thank you very much. Oh, well, thank you. And Barbara, all that you're doing with this intern project. But we've heard this- You know over. that uh, some of those basic uh, birth and death information may be available from the genealogy records, the, the church and city right. records that are online. That's both true. Both at Ancestry and Family Search. Uh -huh. So for the I older ones, not not- Yes. Yeah. I have a question about Las Alicias. Yeah. What was the pavilion that was destroyed? I understand the pavilion being the first, uh, the first structure um, that was originally put in. They called it the pavilion. Now that's my understanding. Um, so the first thing they had the property, and then they put a structure up, which was. Uh, maybe the first house we look at it, but they called it the pavilion. I, the, the, I could be wrong, Ellen, on that, but that's the way I, I read it. I seem to remember in the book about Bartolome, which is in Alamos, and maybe there's yeah. a copy of it in our library, I'm not there sure. Is. I seem to remember, I may be wrong on this, that it, end, it ended up being um, a sort of social house and party house, a place for Bartolome and his friends to go and sit in the garden and socialize. Right. I think that's that certainly is true. And I know that book, I have read his journal from 1859 to 1863, but not recently. And uh, but I know we have a copy and I know Stephanie Meyer has a copy. I borrowed her copy when I read it. Um, but I wanted to say there, the one thing I wanted to say, all of us that have been involved with the History Association, we have all had the experience of saying, this is not available anywhere. We're really doing something special. We're putting all of this together. And that's what keeps us all going. And that's what makes this organization so wonderful. We're really adding putting things in place, making information available that really isn't right now. So uh, I'm proud of the work that all of you are doing. Yes, Susan. I just have to say that I am so impressed with all the work you've done. It's a tremendous project. When you said how long it took to get all the photographs redone and everything, I thought how many days you used in Alamos doing that. Well, let me tell you, Susan, if I weren't working on these pictures, I'd be working on other ones. So, <laughs> I mean, it, it, uh, this is, we're talking labor of love here. This isn't uh, uh, like eating spinach or uh, cranberry. <laughs> to me, eating cranberries has got to be the worst thing in the world. But, but anyway, <laughs> this was a labor of love. <laughs> Hi, Jim. Question? Great program. Uh, I, I especially enjoyed it because I remember the first time I was on the second floor of the Palacio and I wandered into the uh, boardroom and I saw all of these images 
all the way around the room. Right. I thought this is the greatest historic thing about the Palacio. The uh, fact that that has been preserved to that degree yes. with so many of the old uh, sketches and photos and so on. The, the other thing that uh, uh, I know some of the people, uh, Ellen, for example, uh, knew uh, Ida Louise Franklin. Uh -huh. Well, I, I met her when we first came here. And as I recall, she was about 101 when I met her. And I think she died at 102. <laughs> but the booklets that she wrote, uh, one part of the uh, book about the restoration of Las Delicias, yes. mm -hmm. I relate to every guest that I drive out to the Pantheon. And what I tell them is that after they gasp looking at the great old plantation type of home, which had nothing to do with Mexico, no. uh, I tell them the story from Ida Louise's book that in roughly 1850, uh, Senator Almada had returned from the United States with a postcard of a southern plantation. <laughs> gave it to workers in Alamos, went to Mexico City to do his work. When he returned, the Las Delicias had been built. Wow. However, any yeah. of it have been, especially on the second floor of Las Delicias, it's a movie set, essentially. <laughs> Instead of a, it wasn't ever built to the proper scale. It uh, looks good from the outside, mm -hmm. but the second floor, you almost have to duck to walk through the room. So uh, the local builders didn't have a clue. All they had to work with was a photo of the facade of what you see today. Yes, I've that is to, amazing. I have to know from Ellen Price, are you at the Bronca de Cobre, Ellen? No, that's yeah. the... <laughs> that's her background that's my background oh, I love it. it's terrific Thanks. <laughs> well, Jim that book one of my favorite books about Alamos is Ida Louisa Franklin's on Las Delicias but it's, you know she was an artist but such a great writer and I just enjoy what the way she wrote and uh, on our website I've quoted uh, from her in a little uh, biography of her that I have. But what she wrote is just amazing. And uh, yeah, she, she sure. had a lot of, yeah. When, one other observation that crossed my mind, two very important families uh, in the late 1800s, mid 1800s to about 1910, 1920, and extremely wealthy families didn't have any of their family as a mayor. And that would be the Zaragozas yeah. who uh, relocated to Wymus and also the Boers who relocated to both uh, Navajoa and uh, Ciudad Obregon after yeah. the mines closed. But uh, neither of those families were represented on the city council, which was interesting. That is very interesting. I'm glad yeah. you pointed that out. The, the think other item, uh, those of you that know architect Felipe Almada, he's a direct descendant of, of uh, Jose Almada. And looking at those images, he's a dead ringer going back 150 years when some of the later Almadas, he doesn't resemble much at all. So the oh. genetics, the genetics oh. kicked in with him going back to Jose's sons which was interesting. Oh, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Okay, more comments. Yes. Um, first, thanks for the photos. That's what everybody else is saying. It's, they're really beautiful. It's just wonderful work. Um, and my, my real question is, um, is there a lot in terms of like press records and, you know, comments from journalists and such about the work of, of these mayors? Was, was there such a thing as an opposition press? Uh, there was, but I, that's a whole area that we'll have to get into. Uh, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not aware of it. 
<clears throat> you know, in that uh, question, but uh, yeah, we'll have to look. I know that we do have clippings related to Alamos in our research library that Joan was able to get from the New York Times and other sources going back uh, into the 19th century. Uh, but I don't know like what you're talking about uh, if we- if Yeah, we, I'm just, just yeah. curious about some of these guys and especially like uh, when the revolution was happening and we had like a million, a million mayors in a very ah. short period of time and- oh. How, how they, oh yeah, my other question is how did they get into office? Was there an appointment? Was there a large election or? Well, you know, uh, I have always understood there was an election just as there is now. And, but it could be there were uh, the mayors in 1911 and 12 when there were so many. There, uh, I have been told by Jose Armando uh, that they resigned like mayors uh, during the revolutionary time, for whatever reason, uh, there were many resignations. And if there's a resignation, there was probably an, an appointment of some type rather right. than another uh, campaign or whatever. So that is that is uh, a great question that we just are gonna have to research to get mm -hmm. all the information. On there, the issue of on the issue of newspapers, I would think Juan Carlos Holguin would have an answer to that. The trouble is that newspapers are printed on very cheap paper and very easily disintegrate. So it could be that if they had been kept, they've disintegrated. Oh, and also, the, yeah. um, there was, uh, I think, probably vice, vice president days because the, la the latest Presidente has served two terms because he resigned six months before his term <laughs> ended so the Vice Presidente could take over so that he could run for President again. <laughs> oh yeah, I wondered how that happened there, but... Uh, uh, okay. Actually, well, I, think Vic I think Victor Balderrama appointed, and he appointed Everardo Enriquez to uh stand in his stead while he was gone that six months it, it wasn't oh. the vice president who he was oh, okay. uh, uh everardo was a count a city council member uh okay one other thing i wanted to mention on the uh newspapers um i have on our web page um there's a, a title at the top it says historic photo exhibition and this was an exhibition that Tony Estrada had in 2016 in the museum. And Juan Carlos gave uh, an underground newspaper. It seems to me it was called The Phantom, which was an anti, you know, during the 18 whatever period, but it was an anti uh, uh, government publication. And uh, we have a scanned copy of the front page of that paper. It seems like it was called the Phantom, I don't know. But if you go to our website and look historic photo exhibition, uh, you'll see uh, in more information on that. Okay, well, you know, our time, we've gone way over, but you've, you've made yeah. me so uh, feel so good about it. I've kept this meeting alive. I just, but anyway, next week is going to be very special. And Pam is going to be talking to us about the Almada family. And, uh, you know, the, the first thing we ought to learn when we come to Alamos, uh, we ought to learn how to spell the name Almada. It's real easy, but uh, there is so much history tied up into that family name. And uh, so we look forward to that presentation on February 24th. And we have great ones coming up. Pam has a couple more presentations coming up in March, and we just have some great stuff in store. So thank all of you for joining us. And next week's presentation will also be Zoom only because it'll be coming live and direct from Norway, uh, the, the home of all the Winter Olympic champions. So anyway, I'll see you all. I'm gonna end the meeting and I'll see you all next week. 
And uh, so goodbye and thanks. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Thanks, Harold. Thanks, Harold. Thank you.